Hello, and welcome to Day 21 of Dungeon 23. Now, immediately you notice something changed, and that is the backdrop of the dungeon. It used to be a very harsh white, which is fine, but I realized that I didn't really plan on the different light levels of the dungeon. So I set it to be gray to act as a kind of blank, neutral color to signify that this room is, it's dark. It's darkness, you can't see, unless you have dark vision, but you know, that's besides the point. The reason I want to do this is because I want certain rooms to be well lit. And I don't want to just put like a little blurb that says it's well lit. I'm instead going to simply just make the backdrop for that area yellow in the um, background layer. And also, recently, I've reached 100 subscribers, which is pretty cool. I've been at 97, 96, 97 for about three years. So, you know, progress. And because of that progress, I want to make something kind of special. I went and I made a special homebrew monster for the our imaginary As I was saying, it is a milestone, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. So I want to make something special. So I made a homebrew monster. That's going to be like a mini boss, kind of, maybe. It's certainly going to be a challenge. Possibly as challenging than the haunted as challenging as the haunted armor the difference being that the haunted armor could be easily escaped this not so much although they do have the same weakness but we'll talk more about the actual monster when we finish drawing up the room so let us drop the room So, immediately looking at it, happy with the shape. I think the color of like this separating what's lit and what's unlit kind of maybe it doesn't work exactly as well as I thought it would be. Doesn't matter. What's important is that it's a learning experience. And also that we have the basic shape of the room done. Now, the room is well lit, probably from some kind of torches or lamps or oil lamps or something that's here that is. Like, basically everything in this dungeon is basically magically maintained. It's a, a funhouse dungeon. It's all magic. They're probably going to be bolted to the wall, so maybe if the party wants to, like, take them, you know, maybe have it so, like, they last for a little bit before eventually dying, then it just becomes a mundane lamp. That's kind of missing the point. What's important is it's a well-lit room. It is a well-lit room. That is also closed off by two doors. Again, these two doors are not locked. They are just closed. Now, what are we putting in this room? We're going to be putting a little creature I made. One of my favorite things to do is to take two monsters from the monster manual or any book and just smash them together. So what we have here is a bear rug, but it's not just a bear rug. It is specifically a bear rug of smothering. Let me hop over to the character sheet for it and I will explain further. All right, here we are. The bear rug of smothering is a combination of the rug of smothering, which is a CR2 monster, and just a regular black bear, which is a CR1 half monster. Now, its AC is a little bit harder than the normal rug of smothering i believe it's like a 12 and this is a 13 and its hp is a little bit higher at 40 instead of 30. it's also its speed is a little bit higher however its strength is lower its dex is a lot lower constitution i believe is about the same maybe its intelligence is a little bit higher but still it's minus four instead of minus five charisma minus two instead of minus five not it's better but not it's not good enough to like really matter and wisdom is plus one instead of like a minus whatever amount now you notice it does lose its vulnerabilities there was a lot of vulnerabilities that the rug of smothering had it was immune to sorry immunities not vulnerabilities 
it was immune to psychic damage, it was immune to poison damage, it was immune to the poison condition, it was immune to charmed, frightened, paralyzed, petrified. Come to think of it, I don't know if it's immune to the prone condition. I'm actually going to make that change now. It's going to be immune to the prone condition on account of the fact that it's always prone. Like, the gelatinous cube is immune to the prone condition. And I believe mimics are too. Because how you how do you knock a thing that's prone when it doesn't have legs? Or if it's something that's always on the ground. Like, the flail snail, I believe, is immune to prone too. Most oozes are. So it does have, like, better perception and passive perception than the normal rug smothering. But it also loses a lot of vulnerabilities. So it can be charmed, frightened, all those things. I did give it resistance to bludgeoning from non-magical weapons on account of the fact that you're trying to beat up something that doesn't have bones or organs. So what are you doing? And I give it resistance to cold because it's fur. It's a f they should probably bear should probably have resistance to cold anyway. But it's just a fur. As well for something else that comes up later. But it just makes sense. You know? Uh, I gave them keen smell of the bear, so they have advantage on wisdom perception checks that rely on smell. Uh, you notice they do not have dark vision, which is why the room is well lit. And that's kind of a clue that there may be something going on there. They do have anti-magic susceptibility, which I believe I forgot to give the haunted armor. But the haunted armor does have that. And that's because somewhere in the dungeon, I want there to be a scroll of dispel magic. Or rather... In this level of the dungeon, there's going to be a scroll of the spell magic. And the reason I wanted that was so you could get rid of that barrier in the first room, deal with the haunted armor, or now deal with this rug of smothering. So you basically have three options to use the scroll on. And I haven't decided which room I'll put the scroll on. Probably like 25. We still have some time before we have to actually change the floor to be floor 2. Damage transfer is also another thing that comes from the rug of smothering. While it is grappling a creature, the bear rug basically takes half damage, and the other creature takes the other half. So if you're walking along and your bard gets grabbed up by the bear rug, or the regular rug of smothering, when you hit it with a stick, it's going to take half damage, and your buddy's going to take the other half. However, this is resistant bludgeoning, so... You want to use stab wing weapons, stabbing weapons, slashing, piercing, I mean. But also you kind of just don't want to hit your friend while it's being wrapped up in this bear rug. What you want to do is you want to do something like, uh... Actually, I don't think you could use hold monster on a, uh, rug of smothering because it's immune to charmed. Or, no, it's immune to par paralyzation too. You're really just supposed to wail on your friends. That's kind of funny and mean. Uh, false appearance, as long as it's just lying on the ground, it, it looks like a bear rug. As long as it's not moving, you can't really determine it's not a bear rug. Unless you have, like, ma like the, uh, you have, uh, detect magic up, or if you have that, uh, warlock feature that lets you have it up constantly. Pretty basic stuff here. Uh, down here is where we have the interesting things. It does get to make two claw attacks, but it also has a smother ability. Now, the way multi-attack works is it can make, basically the way atta attacks work in general, or acts work in general, it could make the claw action, or it could take the multi-attack action, which lets it take two claw attacks actions. So, it's either smother or the multi-attack is basically what it wants to do. The claw, very basic, very... Uh, it's basically ripped straight from the, uh... Actually, it's not, because regular claw attack... The regular claw attack for the bear does 2d4. This only does 1d4, plus 2 slashing damage. And then we have smother, which is the same two hit... And it's very similar. It's basically the same thing as the rug of smothering's smother ability. The difference being that the DC to escape is a bit lower. It's 12 instead of 13. An extra 5% chance of success. And the target also gets resistant to cold damage. Because you're basically wrapped up in a blanket. It, you can't get as cold as because of it. And the target takes 2d6 bludgeoning damage when it gets wrapped up and smothered at the start of its turn. 2d6 plus 2 instead of, you know... 2d6 plus 3, I think. Maybe. I don't know. It's still a pretty lethal thing to do. In fact, smothering should be a bit harder to do. And let me change that real quick. The 
There we are. Now, for those who don't know, the way recharge works is you could, when you first start out, you could use the ability, no problem. But when you fail, or when you do use the ability, whether it succeeds or fails, whatever it is, the next time you want to roll the ability, do the ability, you have to roll a d6, and on a f whatever numbers are here, like five to six, then it's gonna happen. So that is a 33% chance of being able to smother again. Just something to make sure it's a little bit more fair. It's not gonna try to do it. Although it's a useful DM tool recharge, but you know. As a DM, you should just know not to just keep using the super powerful attacks all the time, you know? Although I do like giving my monsters recharge abilities. I really like putting spell casting on recharge. Like give a, a creature like two or three, not super high level, but maybe like two or three or maybe even fourth level spells on recharge. But they all, that's basically, that's, the, that's basically their entire thing though. They may have a melee attack in that one spell. But that's besides the point, we only have one creature in this level that really casts spells, and it's the Goblin Shaman. Maybe I'll add another one. I don't know. Maybe you just wait that for a second level. But yeah, that is the Bear Rug of Smothering. Let us go back to the dungeon, and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap up. So here we are back in the dungeon. I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure this guy gets renamed. Bear... Rug of Smothering. Give it a nameplate. And save settings. So, pretty basic room with a possibly difficult monster. Although, party could just open the door, see it, and say, that's a bear rug in a well lit room. Maybe we should just go around. And you know, they might, they might also decide, hey, hey, go down this way here, there's a haunted armor, say, oh crap, it's chasing us, come back here, run through here, get the haunted armor and the bear rug to fight. Like, that's what made games like Doom so fun, is that all the infighting you could cause, just have all of your enemies fight each other. Although, you know, these things aren't very intelligent, so they're probably going to attack each other. The zombies are probably going to like wander around, well not wander around, but just kind of hang around here. And the goblins are probably going to avoid the zombies and skeletons. Like they probably know that these ones don't get violent, they don't attack you unless you get close to them. They probably know not to go towards this puddle because there's a monster living in it. And they know just to avoid this room because zombies will just wander around. And they probably know to avoid this horrible, stinking monster that's banging on the doors in this uh, little alcove here. So yeah, monster infighting, pretty fun. It's a good way to get your players to think about how to um, use the environment to their advantage. Like, uh, I just had a funny thought. So we have this room over here that uh, it crushes down. So it'd be really funny if like, you got the haunted armor in there. Like, you kill the you bet you'd kill the haunted armor if you crushed it in there basically but it's a it's a rug of smother this rug here it's already flat so it won't do anything and i just think that's funny anyway this has been day 21 only 10 more days left to go before we'll be finishing up the first floor and we'll have wrapped up our first month of d23 thanks for 100 subscribers thanks for watching like comment subscribe if you aren't and I apologize for the poor quality because it is not going to improve.